Back in August of 2017, AMD released their promising and supposedly revolutionary new GPUs based on their all-new Vega microarchitecture. For months leading up to their release, leaks and speculation placed these cards to be excellent high-end NVIDIA substitutes, as well as beyond excellent performers. Well, once we got our hands on these cards, the truth was finally revealed, and these new cards weren't what we expected. So although they were still great cards, did they provide performance that was actual competition to NVIDIA? And did they prove to be adequate for modern games? If you remember back to before the release of the Vega lineup of cards, these cards were leaked to have some pretty incredible performance when stacked up to similarly priced cards from NVIDIA. With two main releases, that being the RX Vega 56 and the Vega 64, both of these cards had specs that were actually very impressive for the sub $500 MSRP that they launched at. Both these cards featured the newly developed Vega 10 graphics core, which when fully unlocked delivers over 12.5 teraflops of graphics performance, with 4096 cores clocked at 1200 MHz. The Vega 64 was the one to utilize the fully unlocked core, but the Vega 56 utilizes a cut down Vega 10, utilizing 3584 cores clocked at 1138 MHz. Other core specifications between these two cards is rather similar to other high-end GPUs available from NVIDIA, but the one thing that set Vega apart was its use of HBM2 memory. Traditionally, GPUs have several memory chips laid out around the main GPU core, and this is the format used with GDDR forms of memory. HBM2 is a different type of memory, and is a form where DRAM chips are physically stacked on the GPU die, meaning that they can run much faster with much higher bus widths. And since they are in such close proximity to the processing core, latency and access times are usually pretty low. NVIDIA's Pascal microarchitecture features GDDR5, which, although very fast, still isn't as quick as HBM2. Even today with NVIDIA's Touring architecture, GDDR6 is still not as fast as HBM memory. Because of this, Vega GPUs are great for general purpose computing, and thanks to the high memory bandwidth, they make great content creation and workstation cards. But because AMD piled on the cores rather than increasing clock speeds, gaming performance can be slower than its competitive contemporaries. When comparing performance to that of the GTX 1080, the flagship Vega 64 is about 3% behind, putting it more in line with the much more recent RTX 2060. The step-down card, the Vega 56, beats out the 1070 by only a 4% margin, putting it ahead of the 1660 Ti, but still behind the older 1070 Ti. While the level of performance offered by the Vega lineup is still commendable, it wasn't able to blow general consumers away by offering 1080 killing performance at a much cheaper price point. While the Vega 56 is a great 1070 substitute, the higher end and much more expensive Vega 64 wasn't able to beat the 1080, which was already incredibly popular and also slightly cheaper. They're still great cards though, don't get me wrong, but when considering other factors such as power draw and heat output, these cards are much more inefficient than the Pascal NVIDIA offerings. When comparing the Vega 56 to the GTX 1070, you get a 40% increase in total power draw, while only gaining 4% in terms of performance. Yeah. Overall, the value proposition of these cards was initially kind of odd. With the Vega 56 coming in with an MSRP of $399 and the Vega 64 launching at $499, both of these cards don't perform too differently from each other when considering the price. Raw performance figures place the Vega 64 to be 11% ahead of the Vega 56, but if you're willing to perform a mild overclock, then the much cheaper card is able to nearly match the higher end offering. Neither card, especially the Vega 64, is able to offer a significant advantage over the other, with both the 64 and 56 models having 8 gigs of HBM2 memory and sharing many of the base specs. Today, however, these cards are actually a better value than they were when they released. The Vega 56 can be found for under $270, while the Vega 64 will set you back over $350. And thanks to driver optimizations and other additions, the Vega 56 now outperforms the 1070 in a lot of games, while the Vega 64 still trails behind the 1080. Gaming-wise, these cards are decent. For the price that you can find them at, they're a pretty good deal, and if you've got a PSU that can handle one, then they're a great buy if you want to get into 1440p and some 4K gaming. But the use case that these cards excel at is content creation. Not only do the core configurations ensure a smooth editing experience, but with the incredibly high bandwidth HBM2 memory, you'd be able to power through almost any professional or video editing related use case. While they were sorta of top of the line back in 2017, I've found that they've aged rather well. 
and while they won't be killing Pascal anytime soon, they are great alternatives. And since you can find flavors of both the 56 and 64 for many quality brands, they're still a decent buy, but they do excel in one area. If you want a card primarily for gaming, then I would go for an older 1070 or even an RTX 2060. But if you want to get into content creation, then you can't go wrong with the Vega, and I can't wait to see how the newly released Radeon 7 holds up in a few years. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. And also tell us, what do you think about Vega? Do you think these cards have aged well, or do you think these cards aren't all they're cut out to be? I can't wait to see what you guys have to say, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.